YouTube and all you Mazzy lovers out there welcome back to my channel Mix Mazda Valleys. here we are again today in my cool to cold growing greenhouse in the United Kingdom it's Saturday the 21st of September 2019 and it's about 9 o'clock in the morning first I'd like to apologize to my viewers for not doing a recent update in the last eight weeks I find it very difficult at times to um, come in here set up the camera but you know life's life and you've got to get your priorities right anyway let's get started today I'd like to start with three questions I've received from viewers I'll uh, we'll get onto them in a minute then let's uh, look at what's in bloom my success and failures this season and I've had a few to say the least uh, new equipment from a car boot sale believe it or not and it's been adapted for my needs and finally a greenhouse tour so let's get started with the questions right then I've got the three book the three questions wrote down today which have been posted by viewers and I like to respond to everybody that asks us a question or who are into Mazda Valleys or Orchids in any way well, the first question I got from a viewer was, what book do you consider useful as a Mazda Valley grower? Believe me, I've read them all. I've been through every book on Mazda Valleys, and in my opinion, they're all different. But I did find one that I find very useful, and I did say on the last video that I would show you at the end. And at my age, I forgot. So here it is. The Gems of the Orchid World. Mazda Valley is an absolutely brilliant book in my opinion, full of information, pictures, everything you need to know about Mazda Valley is. It even tells you the temperature range because not all Mazda Valley is are cool growers. And I've learned the hard way on that. Some like it a little bit warmer, some don't like it so cold. So I hope that answers your question. The Gems of the Orchid World is the book that I would recommend to anybody to read. It's quite expensive to buy new. It's out of publication at the moment, but you can pick it up for probably £35 off Amazon. Anyway, that's one question out of the way. Let's get on to the second one. I know you use Rain Mix. What does the packaging look like and where can I buy it from? Well, um, I'll show you the packaging. I keep it in a tub for more insulation because if this gets damp, in this greenhouse then I've got a problem it all clogs up and it's no good whatsoever it's in granular form that's what I use Aikens rain mix that's a 400 gram tub it costs about 10 pound I believe um, I get this from orchidsupplies.co.uk um, I have it sent through the post it's easier for me rather than go and get it you don't see much of it on eBay and I think there's only a few suppliers in the UK who actually sell it. So that's the packaging. For the viewer that asked uh, to see what it looked like, that's the one. So that's number two question answered. Right, and the third question. Do you grow Draculas? If so, can we see them? Well, I thought I'd shown Draculas before on videos, but obviously I haven't. But I will show you. Um, I've only got six Draculas. I'll pick a couple up. Um, and show you what I've got firstly this is uh, one of my Draculas Dracula Vampira um, it's coming on it was recently repotted a few months ago I'm even getting leaves coming through the basket at the moment that's a nice healthy plant for a Dracula but it's not bloomed yet um, I don't understand why it's not bloomed, but it's put out a lot more new growth. I was speaking to um, a Dracula enthusiast the other day, um, and I was telling them that I'd keep mine on the lower shelves, at the bottom of the greenhouse where it's coolest. It's more shady down there, and basically it says to me, why? Give them some light. So I moved it up. Uh, a few weeks ago and since then I don't know if you're going to see properly on this camera but all these new shoots and leaves 
are popping up ever since I started giving it more light. So that is a nice healthy plant and I'm hoping that sometime in the coming months we get uh, a few flower spikes on that uh, vampire. So what other one have I got? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Dracula Vlad Tapis. This is a, a lovely little plant and again a lot of new growth are coming through. If I can probably get a little bit nearer to the camera you might be see better. A lot of new growth. Since I put it in the light, and I've always believed that these light to be kept in a lot of shade, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new growths coming on that blood tapis. And again, hopefully that will uh, produce some uh, flower spikes uh, around about October time. So I've got here. Um, which one is this? Dracula Venifica. Again, I've moved it up to the light, and I've got a lot of new growths coming now. So, by reading the books and being the old school, it's not necessarily true that they have to be in the coldest part of the greenhouse with high shade. That's proved that I've got all this growth coming on. So don't always believe what you read in books and don't forget this is how I grow my Draculas. I'm not telling anybody this is the way to grow them. I'm saying it's how I do it. A recent acquisition is the uh, Eartha Shete. As you can see that I've only had this uh, a week or so. I've repotted it. It's had a flower spike. Obviously the flower spike blasted during transport. You're not going to get um, Dracula survive in transport and bloom at the same time. But again, a nice healthy plant. And in the short time that I've had it, a lot of new growth because I've started giving these some additional light in the early part of the day. I move them back down later, but during the day, early part, when the light's out, I give it to them. So that's there's another Dracula, have I got any more? Chimera, Dracula Chimera. Again, a small division, recently acquired. As you can see, one, two, three new shoots appearing now. So it's pushing out now. And again, I've given it that little bit of extra light. And it's producing and it's looking fantastic. So... As I said, you know, you grow them how you want to grow them, and you can. The one I've got a bit of problem with is probably uh, Dracula Lotax, not doing fantastic, really not doing fantastic. However, by moving it up to a bit more light, again, if you can see in there, I've put, I've got some additional new shoots coming through. So, looking good in the end, it might well start growing on to what uh, these Draculas should look like. Well I think that's all I've got on the Draculas, I've shown you most of them now. Uh, yeah, I've shown you all of them. And again, I hope that answers a, a viewer's questions. When they do spike or flower, I'll definitely do um, an update so you can see these Draculas in bloom. Anyway, now let's get on to um, look at some of the mazes I've got in bloom at the current time. Then we'll look at some of the not so happy Mazda Valleys that I've got in this greenhouse that I'm struggling with. And then finally I'll just do a bit of a greenhouse tour. So, so let's have a look then what I've got in bloom in September. Firstly, I've got a nice no ID. I haven't got a clue what it is. I've looked in the books and there's so many hybrids out there it's difficult to tell but if you can see this sorry but the fans on it's blown it around a bit but a truly amazing colour it's got one, two there's the third spike coming up now so a beautiful Mazda Valia no idea I will find out what it's called and I'll make sure I tell you when I do know um, Secondly, I'm waiting for Charisma. This is um, a recent division. 
but as you can see, one, two, three spikes. And Charisma, for any of you Mazda Valleys out there who know what Charisma looks like, is a beautiful Mazda Valley. A beautiful little orchid. So, hopefully, we'll be showing that in a few weeks' time. Um, we've seen this before, but it's pushing up um, more spikes. This is uh, Mazda Valia Setesa. A truly beautiful little orchid, this. It's quite big. Um, uh, the sun's coming out for you now to show you. But a beautiful little orchid. And it's got, following on from that, I've got another spike here. And, and then I've got uh, Rosemary. A beautiful little Mazda Valia. Uh, it's a hybrid cross of uh, coccinia and glandulosa. The fog has just come on so you might hear a bit of noise. Again, a beautiful little Mazda Valia. Doing well. To say it was a small division early in the season, a lot of new growth and it's looking well. So what else have I got to show you? Triangularis. Triangularis is a species Mazda Valia. This one's going over a bit now, but if you can see, the triangle shape, the colours is deep yellow, red veining, and red on the um, points to it. But a beautiful Mazda Valia. And again, doing well. And finally, just want to show you one of my own divisions, which I've done about five or six of these. This is Inca Prince. This one's about ready to open. They've been flowering all summer long, really. Um, but a truly amazing Mazda Valia. And you won't go wrong growing these. So... That's all I've got in bloom at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is show you some of the um, the Mazda Valleys that I'm probably struggling with or I'm not happy with or they're not happy in this environment at this moment in time. So, so I just want to show you now some of the um, Mazda Valleys that I'm struggling with. I recently bought um, a Falcata of somebody. I think it had a fungus infection, or it was these, but it was a big plant. And I thought if I split it and treat it, I may well get three nice divisions. Here's one of the divisions of it. But as you can see, the leaves are going black. Now I don't know what that is on this, but I have got new growths coming up here. So I'm hoping the new growths will come out clear and I've treated this so we may well have there's two more of the same plant, the Falcata, Mazda Valley of Falcata. But as you can see all the leaves are brilliant. And um, I know I've got this environment right at the moment for these Mazda Valleys, so I'm struggling a little bit. If anybody could help me on that one, why it's turning black and not responding please let me know but don't forget we don't always get it right any of us so that's um, my Falcata that I'm struggling with for the viewers who watched a lot of uh, my videos a few months ago I had uh, a Mazda Valia covered in scale and it really was bad it really was bad Polytoriana well, this is the plant. No scale whatsoever. Put a lot of growth on this season. Amazing plant. Um, due to flower in the autumn. So, hopefully, we can get some flowers on this in the autumn. But, as you can see, it's really put uh, on some growth this season. Since getting rid of the scale. Um, another one I'm probably struggling with, a little bit, is Lucanula. A very tiny division of Lucanula. Um, I've had it probably uh, three months, say now. This leaf's dying back. I can accept that the older leaves die back, but it's not big enough to be a mature plant. It's very, 
very small division but if you look just in there I'm sure I don't know if you can see it never miss the label just in there we have got a new growth forming so hopefully with time I can bring that on I've thought about mounting this um, it's just putting roots I had a look the other day um, it's just one of them things you know some you win and some you lose but we've got to keep going and see how we can perform with it and on my last video I did say to some people um, I've got quite a few Viciana um, and they're not uh, spiking well lo and behold I had a look around this morning and I've just seen a Viciana division with a spike that don't look like it's going to blast at the moment in time so we may well get Viciana spike and a second spike coming just here well I think that's all the um, things I'm struggling with at the moment so let's um, let me get the camera down and do a bit of a walk through let you see what's coming on what's growing and um, oh and I don't know if any of you go into a, a car boot I went to a car boot the other week, me and the wife, and I was looking for some uh, clay pots. And I came across something that I thought, oh, that's handy. I might have that. Anyway, I'll show you when I've set it up. Because at the moment, during this, um, what I call temporary heat wave we're getting in the UK, it's far too warm in here. And um, I missed him probably twice a day, or the wife comes in twice a day while I'm away. And miss all these Mazda Valleys twice a day. And when I've got a little four litre spray pump spray, it's quite a thankless task keep having to fill it, spray them twice a day because what it's doing is cooling the leaves down and it's actually helping with the humidity. So I seen this uh, item on a car boot for 15 quid. I thought to myself, I might be able to change that. So I'll show you in a minute. But first of all, I'll get the camera down and we'll just have a look around the greenhouse. Well, I thought I'd start um, over this side today. Um, just a few of them as is on the way into the greenhouse. Um, looking alright. I'm quite pleased at the moment in time with how they're coming on. Um, my sphagnum, as you can see, is now growing and it's only on a bit of netting in like a seed tray, a shallow seed tray. But it's coming on. Um, I've still got some um, Nepenthes. Um, they're looking fine at this moment in time. In fact, they look uh, amazing. This Ventrata, which everybody has a Ventrata, but it's pushed out plenty of pictures, and I'm quite happy with it. I'm moving around now to show you the smallest in my collection still, Plothalus Mastodon. Um, doing all okay that is. It's been in that little hanging basket for probably a year and a half and it's doing alright. Uh, another Nepenthes. Another Nepenthes. Then we'll just have a quick look at uh, my Draculas because apparently I don't share my Draculas enough with people who um, grow Draculas. But I'm no expert in Draculas. But I'm learning and I think we all learn um, when we get orchids or when we start the hobby. We look into how we can improve it. And don't forget, when you do get a new orchid, you've got to give it time to acclimatise to your conditions. It's probably come out of a grow room, it's been in transport, it might have been in a greenhouse. You've got to give it time to adjust to how you want to grow it. And I give them a couple of months and to be fair, the majority of these Mazda Valleys that I grow have now acclimatised to my environment. And I, I'm quite impressed with the um, the way things are turning out. I do actually love them, you know that. Um, there's some beautiful orchids out there that people grow and I watch uh, Roger's orchids, never miss one, 
Margaret East orchids, Emmy's orchids, and never miss one. Ed's, I never miss any of their videos because I think they've got some beautiful plants. But I just love these mazzies and uh, I can't change that. So to all the growers out there, whatever you grow, keep the videos coming. You've got an audience out there who loves looking at um, people's videos. Probably even being a little bit nosy inside inside somebody else's grow space to see if you can improve yours. But um, yeah, all looking good. Mugenia has never looked so good. This is a beautiful plant. Um, if I can show you better, but a beautiful colour on that plant. I think I've got about 160, 170 at the moment, uh, Mazda Valleys. And obviously I'll never have the full collection of all the species and all of the hybrids. But I'm going to get uh, the ones I can get while I've got enough room in this greenhouse. I'm going to keep, keep getting uh, Mazes. I do take a lot of divisions. I do swap a lot of divisions. Um, People who know me locally often come round and we do a few swaps or they ask for a division of a plant, I take the division and I wait until such time as um, I know it's got a decent root growth because there's no way I would sell anything or swap anything that I wasn't happy with, that I wouldn't accept myself. They're just some of my uh, chlorothalis. It was a huge plant and I've made all divisions. It had all red leaves when I first got it and I'm trying to grow them out and to be fair, successfully, I'm not doing too bad. There's a couple left on that one but they will die off and come off. But the young divisions are coming on okay. Um, another than a Penthes. My uh, Fusca. The Penthes is in the background, but it's produced um, a flower spike up there. You can see it. But yeah, all looking good. Fans are going. Unfortunately, the fog is on at the moment. Um, I do have about four dendrobiums. I mean, I haven't got a clue with dendrobiums. I just watch uh, Roger, and hopefully, Roger will. Put me right. I know he's got an abiki, and I recently got an abiki, um, and I know that Rogers is mounted for, and he gets a better view of the flowers. If you can see in there, there's a flower on this abiki, so I may well mount that early next year. Um, that's just um, phalaenopsis. Some of the mounted ones I've got mounted on the back wall. Um, Thysiflorum, another dendrobium, put three nice new shoots out for me this year. Um, but it's looking okay, I must be doing something right, but um, as I say, I do follow Roger where these are concerned. Chrysotoxin, another one, putting new growths out. But yeah, when he swapped, I swapped for uh, King Eanum. I've had that King Eanum since I started, a lady gave me that and I try to get it on every video so she sees it growing. One of my Bilbophyllums up there, doing okay. But yeah, to be fair, everything's looking good. I don't know if you can see in the background, I've got a Cilogeny Frimbiata mounted. It's in bloom at the moment. But yeah, I think that's about all I can show you today. Apart from the bargain I got from the um, car boot sale. I hope I've gone a bit slow with the camera today because I've got an habit of rushing around to try to do things. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. So let me set up my new um, bargain and let you have a look at it working. See what you think, let me know. It saves me time, it saves my wife time when we're trying to miss these uh, mazzies. And I'm sure for people who've got a big green ass, it would be ideal for them, and I'm sure you can pick one up cheap. So, catch you in a minute. Right then, here's the bargain of a car boot sale. It was being sold as a caravan jet wash. 
it holds 20 litres of water, it's 12 volt. Um, I said to the guy, can I see it running? So he plugged it into his um, car lighter, chucked some water in it, and it was like a power wash. And I thought, Do you know what, I could change that and make that useful. So what I did, I uh, got an old lance. I put, um, I reduced the pressure on the washer. I bought a uh, 12 volt to 230 to 40 volt um, change. It like changes it from 12 to 24 so I can run it off a normal plug. I filled it with water and I use that now for misting. I'm going to do it now. It does make a bit of noise so if you want to hear it go, you'll hear it go. The guy was asking £15 for it um, and I said no, nah, not really. It had all the brushes, the lance, everything really for cleaning a caravan, power washing a caravan or your car off a 12 volt battery. So I said no, nah, I'll give you a tenner. Anyway, I gave him the tenner. As I said, we tried it. I was impressed. I come home. I thought, I'm going to have to try and uh, change this pressure down. I don't want that pressure. I just want it to be a nice flow to do misting. So, I'm going to turn it on. It'll make a bit of noise. But please bear with me with that. So, you've heard it start up. I'll get the lance in my hand. I'm going to try and do it quickly because... Um, I don't want to take everybody's time up. I know that you like to watch a lot of videos at weekends. But this has really made life a lot easier for me. So let me just give it a little quick blast so you can see the effect of coming out. See? A nice even mist going all over them. And twice a day, these love it. These mazzies love it twice a day. It just gives them the cooling effect on their leaves and it helps with the humidity in this greenhouse. So I'll turn this off now because obviously I bet the noise is getting on your nerves. But I just wanted to show it you, show you what I picked up cheap and if I can improve the environment for these Mazda Valleys I will do. So what I'd like to say now is um, thanks for watching, thanks for the subscribers and all the new subscribers to this channel. Without you it's not worth doing the videos to show you how these Mazda values grow. I mean not everybody agrees with my methods but if you look around you can clearly see that I'm doing okay. And I'm quite impressed with that little pressure washer now. I can do the whole greenhouse in probably 15 seconds. And everything gets, uh, as you can see, there's plenty of moisture on the leaves. And the fans will dry that out in probably a couple of hours. And will look okay. So thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel. And if you are a Mazzy grower, put some videos on of your Mazda Valleys. Let's see them. I've also started uh, a Facebook group for mixed Mazda Valleys so if you want to put any pictures on there of any orchid not just Mazda Valleys please do so anybody can join it's open to everybody and I'll catch you all on the next one thanks for watching bye